Welcome to the Deep Impact Investing Podcast with Kimberly Griego-Kyle of Horizon Sustainable Financial Services. In this podcast, we discuss sustainable impact investing, creating portfolios that match your values, and a variety of other topics such as financial education, social justice, and sustainable food systems. Do you want to know if your investments seek the kind of accountability from corporations that you demand? Listen in as we explore the burning question, are you investing like you give a damn? Hello and welcome to Deep Impact Investing with Kimberly Grego Kyle from Horizon Sustainable Financial Services. If you're a longtime listener, this podcast is a little different. I'm, I'm pretty excited to talk to Kim about this today. She went to a conference and she was interviewing folks, so I'm, I'm excited. Kim, what is going on this morning? Well... I did go to a conference, an in-person conference. Yes. Surprise. <laughs> yeah, all right. How was it that? Was, it was great. We were very safe, in case people were wondering. So, yeah, it, this is the first conference I've been to in two years. Wow. Yeah, it's been a I while. Know. It has been a while. So I just want people to know this is our annual, uh, minus last year, um, in social investing conference, sustainable investing conference. So I've been going to this conference for 23 years, although it's been going on for 30, so before mm. my time. Wow. I know. <laughs> and it's it's one of our very important industry conferences where a lot of our advisors get together, asset managers, mutual fund companies, those of us who are deeply involved in the social investment industry. And I was very proud to be part of putting this conference together this year on the agenda committee. So that was fun. And the conference this year was titled ESG for impact. So if you remember E S and G environmental, social and governance, mm -hmm. that was our focus of course. And it was held at the Broadmoor in Colorado Springs. Nice. Lovely place. If you've ever been there, it's really nice. And we had great weather. So it was nice. Beginning of October, hmm. lovely time of year to be there in Colorado Springs. Great weather great in Colorado. Hiking. Yeah, yeah, I bet. Yeah, great hiking if you can take some time and get away and do that. One of the things that was really nice is our team at Horizon didn't stay at the Broadmoor. We stayed literally across the street at an Airbnb mm. that held all seven of us, which is nice. So... You know, some of us aren't located here in the Santa Fe office. Some of us are located in the Northwest. And surprisingly, if you remember, Paul is in Alabama. So That's right. I know, yeah. So we all came together and we had our annual team compliance meeting. Sounds kind of boring, but, you know, we did it. And it was fun to for everyone to get together and um, meet a new team member, which we'll be introducing to our podcast listeners probably early next year. And, nice. And yeah, and just do our thing and, and get together and you know, have fun. Because we do want to have fun too. Yeah. But <laughs> and back to the conference. So during the conference, as you mentioned, I did take my podcasting equipment and spent some time interviewing some of the folks who have been in this industry for a while and some newer folks, which was fun. Man. I really enjoyed doing that. Yeah, reporter on the scene, boots yeah. on the ground. <laughs> yeah, that's what it felt like, you know, being, you know, right there on the ground in the middle of all of it, in the whole conference space, talking to people, getting some impressions from new people. And I don't want to use the word old timers, but long timers. I think I used that word with someone, long timers. It's a better word. <laughs> I don't I, want someone to call me an old timer. Yeah, so. <laughs> well, I don't think any of us want that. I, I'll tell you, I, I know that you and the conference is all revolved around people that are very much of the same mindset and yeah. with ESG. So I know the environment that you're in. You actually sent me a picture of your booth, which was awesome. Yeah. And But I, I just know that if we gave you an opportunity maybe to go to the the big oil conference in Vegas or wherever they party, <laughs> you know, big oil conference in Dubai, that you would be the one with a microphone just running up to executives, asking them hard questions, shoving a mic in their face and, you know. <laughs> I probably would, yeah. You totally would. You totally would. But, but this was well, a much different that, conference. 
Yeah, you say that. And literally right after that conference, I was at a conference in Vegas. <laughs> right? Was it Big Oil? No, no, it wasn't. It was a traditional advisor conference. And okay. I was on the ESG panel. Wow. The, the single ESG panel, which was very interesting. And it was pretty well attended. And these are advisors who want to incorporate ESG, mm-hmm. sustainable investing in their you know, in their um, portfolios for their clients because their clients are asking for it and they don't really know how to do it. They want some advice. They want to know what they need to be doing. So that was my job. Wow. All right. Well, that's, I mean, you've been traveling a lot. That's great. I have, and it's really nice to be home. (laughs) (laughs) All right. So like we said, this is a, this podcast is a different format. So what you've done is you've taken all these interviews and you're doing just basically, we're going to do a mini series, right? We are. So what I've done is I've taken seven interviews. We'll do one today in this podcast. And then I've broken up the other six into three additional podcasts. So we've created a bit of a series. Perfect. And each one has a little bit of a theme to it. So that's how I tried to create it. All right. So who do we have today? Well, the first one today is a gentleman named Rex Raymond. And I, I wanted to put him on first because Rex was gracious enough to join me in a panel that I put together for the conference. And this panel in particular was about how we work towards creating a new economy. And you might be thinking, well, what do you mean? What's, what do you mean by new economy? Yeah. And, you know, here we are in really in the throes of... ESG and sustainable investing, it's really a hot button issue now. And everyone seems to be doing it. You know, when I started this 23 years ago, it was really a fringe thing still. Mm -hmm. And, And it had been going on for a couple of decades already. So, you know, I wasn't a founding person in this industry, but I have been doing it for a while. And I have been called a pioneer in the industry, but I'm not an original pioneer by any means. So Rex and I and David Bennell, who has been on my podcast before, we, we mm-hmm. had this panel where we wanted to talk about how do we get from where we are now, which is pretty intense at this point, to a new and better economy, a more sustainable economy, because we have a lot of work to do. And Rex is the director of transformative investing in food systems and initiatives. Sounds like a really hmm. big title, right? Yeah. But you know what he does is research in food systems. And so we talked about that, the work that he does. And we really talked about how private investment and public finance uh, needs to happen in more in food systems. Hmm. So that's the conversation we had. We didn't really relate that to new economy work because we talked about that in the panel, but I wanted, you know, we've talked a lot about food systems because I'm really passionate about that. And Rex is incredibly passionate about that. Plus he has a really lovely accent. You're going to enjoy that. Listening audience, we're going to queue up the the recordings that Kim did and add them to these podcasts. So you're going to hear that next. And then Kim and I'll get back together and we'll close out the show. So without further ado, here's Rex and Kim. This is Kim Griego. Kyle reporting no i'm not really reporting but i'm here at the esg for impact conference in colorado springs we're at the broadmoor which is awesome and very classy so i am sitting here with rex raymond hi rex, Kim. hi <laughs> <laughs> we've been having fun today together we because we were on a panel right and rex tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do all right thanks kim Thanks for having me on, and thanks for inviting me to the conference. It's been a great experience. Good. Uh, so I work f- with two groups of foundations. One's called the Global Alliance for the Future of Food. The other is the Agroecology Fund, a whole bunch of funders from Europe, uh, North America, and a few other places. And they're all interested in changing our food systems to make them more environmentally sustainable and socially just. And the thing that I work on is called Transformational Investing in Food Systems, and it's really all about building bridges between the program offices and the investment teams 
to find ways and help the investment teams find ways to bring their investments more in alignment with these large food system transformation goals. I love it. We've talked a lot on this podcast about food systems and the food chain. I just recently did a podcast on sustainable fishing and seafood. Cool. So we've talked so much about food. I, I'm super passionate about this. I'm, gonna, I'm an too. organic gardener and <laughs> you know, I raise my own chickens. So food systems are incredibly important and really we have to look beyond that on social justice issues and, and equity. And I know those are all things that you address. Food right? systems touch everything. Yeah. I think, yeah, it's it's the way we grow our food it can have positive impacts on the land or not. It can deplete the land. The way we provide food, put it on people's plates can lead to diet related diseases or make you feel great because of the good nutrition you're getting. The way that we're interacting with and creating structures that either support or diminish rural communities. It can either contribute to thriving economies or it can extract the value from them and tear them apart. And that's what we've been doing all over the world in, in good and bad ways. But I think we're currently seeing just how destructive the system is that we have created. Certainly it has generated a lot of positive outcomes over the decades that we've been building this global um, interconnected food system. But we are also seeing that how extractive it has been, and now we're seeing the consequences of that. And um, yeah, and that's something that that we all have a stake in improving. We do because we all have to eat. We all have to eat, right? Yes. I I think about this too with the work you're doing and how it relates to investing, mm -hmm. because of course that's what I do, and yeah. you are working with investors. That's what yep. you said, correct? Exactly. How does the research that you're doing relate to investing and what is it that you're helping investors do? Mm -hmm. you know, private capital flows are so important. You know, they are part of the, they're a huge part of the current food system. And where the money goes is also determines who is acting and who gets to grow their operations. So finance, and, and private finance are really important. I think also important in relation to public finance, you know, subsidies, government subsidies maintain the current system to a large extent, determine who is profitable and who is not because- In the, the current system. In the current system, right? yes. So we need to look beyond the current system. We need to look at the new system that we want to create, and then we need to tool our financial mechanisms to channel the capital towards the places that are inventing the new system. We talked about that on the panel we just had, Yeah, is creating the new system that we want to have mm -hmm. and not continuing to repeat the pattern of the old system that is right. not working. Right. Continuing to give subsidies to farms to not produce or throw away the production that they've had is a bad system. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> right. It's the, uh, the World Benchmarking Alliance just two weeks ago released the first benchmark of 350 global um, food and ag businesses, most of them publicly traded. And it just shows, you know, the top 10% uh, do fairly well. They score 75 out of 100. But the two thirds of these companies, they get a score of 25 and they're ranked against a bunch of metrics for environmental sustainability, um, equity, governance, you know, ESG metrics. But it's just an indicator of something that we already know. They're the kind of large global companies are, are really the beneficiaries of the current system. They are tremendous at being efficient at doing the particular thing that they do and often that means like being really focused on producing a particular crop in the most efficient possible way and it loses sight of all the other things that come with good land management for instance about providing fair wages fair probably. wages for yeah. exactly fair compensation for farmers for all the things that they create not just the number of of calories per acre that they produce but 
Can we also value, for instance, the soil health that contributes to a more nutritious product, a healthier product on, on your plate? that contributes to water infiltration and restocking of water tables and clean water you know cleaning up the water you know clean water and access to clean water is a huge issue for the world at the moment and will continue to be and the way we manage our land has a big part to play in that so those are just a few examples yes we could probably talk for mm -hmm. 20 minutes on examples Mm -hmm. and i would find that super fascinating but I don't want to take up a whole lot of time. So I'm going to ask you one final question. I know I invited you here, yeah. but tell me what you hoped to get out of your time here at the ESG for Impact conference. I am so impressed with all the people here and also the conversations that are that the organizers have structured by who they're inviting, the topics that they're putting on the agenda. But then the people in the audience are have really been at this for in sometimes dec- in some cases for decades, really kind of charting the the path towards a more responsible way of investing. I when I came here, I was really hoping to better understand what this community needs from organizations like mine, in terms of what kind of information, what kind of tools and frameworks how to apply tools and frameworks to better compare and assess different types of investments. I still feel like we're scratching the surface a little bit, especially with the complexity of food systems and to bring that back to you know, the, the more tangible, very concrete advice that you are often being asked to provide to your clients. So I see this as the beginning or a dip, my dipping my toe in a deep well of wisdom to better align my work with what your community needs. That's great. And I hope you're getting a little bit of what you need and that we'll see you at more of these conferences so you can continue to deepen your knowledge. Excellent. Yes. I sure hope so. Yes. This has been exciting. I, it's been so great to meet you face to face and get to know you. I think we're going to continue to have some really great conversations because we have a similar passion here. And I hope I can continue to give you some knowledge on what we need. I sure am am looking for it. So Kim, thanks so so much for inviting me um, to the podcast, but also to the conference. Yes. Otherwise, I would not really have, I probably would have learned about it after the fact. Yes, probably. (laughs) Thanks so much for joining me today. Thanks, Kim. All right. (laughs) Eric, what did you think about Rex? Okay, so the accent was no joke, right? <laughs> right. No, it's not a joke. <laughs> and yeah, no, it, it was great. And what an interesting guy. Yeah, he's he's such an interesting guy. I could really talk to him about the work he's doing in food systems for hours. Yeah. And, you know, we sat down before the conference, and uh, although we had talked several times, you know, before, literally two hours before our panel, And we just talked and talked and talked about Mm. what we were going to do. And then we got off on a tangent about food and the food systems and the changes we need to make and where we needed to go. And I just really love Rex and I hope to work with him more in the future. Yeah. Well, I I think this was a fantastic addition to your podcast because obviously you guys are your hearts are knit together for ESG and for, for making a true impact. So it was great to have him on the show. Yeah, it was. And I just can't appreciate Rex any more than I did. And, and you know, as he talked about with private finance and public finance, which is a little more difficult in food systems, there's so much we can do and we need to be doing. And, you know, I know people are interested in that and we're doing the best we can. But if folks want to learn more about it, they can certainly contact me at Kim at horizonssfs.com or call me on the phone, which doesn't happen much anymore, right? But 505 505- Nine eight two nine six six one. All right. Well, obviously, big shout out to Rex. Great job. I'm so glad that you're at the conference with Kim because you both, I'm sure, gained uh, tremendous valuable information from the conference and each other, uh, which is always good to connect with somebody who has like mind and like heart. So, and and of course, Kim, thank you so much for taking your podcasting equipment. I wasn't there with you. I, I missed no. out on Colorado, but I'm telling you. 
you did such an amazing job. I'm hoping that I'm not fired after this uh, because you could do this all <laughs> I'm by yourself. I'm going to keep you around. I'm okay. going to keep you around. <laughs> okay, good, because I still need to learn a lot. So thank you so much for doing that and, and putting these interviews to these podcasts. I'm, I'm really looking forward to this special edition, um, this little mini series that you put together. And of course, our last thank you goes to you listening audience. Thank you so much for tuning in and listening to the Deep Impact Investing Podcast with Kimberly Greco Kyle. If you have not subscribed to the podcast yet, please click the subscribe now button below. This way, when Kim comes out with a new podcast, it'll show up directly on your listening device. This makes it really easy to share these podcasts with your friends and family. Again, thanks so much for listening today. For everyone at Horizon Sustainable Financial Services, this is Eric Johnson reminding you to live your best day every day. And we'll see you next time. Thank you for listening to Deep Impact Investing, the sustainable, responsible impact investing podcast that shows you how to invest like you give a damn. If you have questions about this podcast or topics you'd like to hear addressed on an upcoming podcast, email us at kim at horizonssfs.com. Join the conversation on Twitter at horizonssustfin or give us a call at 505-982-9661. Don't forget to click the subscribe button to be notified when new episodes become available. The companies we may speak about during our podcast are not recommendations for investment. Only you and your financial advisor can determine what the right investments are for you. Horizon Sustainable Financial Services, Inc. and its financial professionals do not render tax or legal advice. The information covered and posted represents the views and opinions of the host and or guest and does not necessarily represent the views and opinions of Horizon Sustainable Financial Services. The content has been made available for informational and educational purposes only. The content is not intended to be a substitute for professional investing advice. Always seek the advice of your financial advisor or other qualified financial service providers with any questions you may have regarding your investment planning. None of this content may be used or duplicated without the express written agreement of the podcast host.